Hello, I'm Forsell Gappa with Gappa Security Solutions, and I wanted to take a moment and record a, a little video with a PowerPoint that I use frequently to teach you how to consider master keying your facilities. Um, we, I, I kind of try to take a real simplistic approach just to give you a feel for it, so if it sounds kind of elementary, bear with me. That's um, usually necessary for at least a percentage of people I, I do this class with. Um, I do have a customer or two right now that is in need of some keying work, uh, doing a keying meeting, so I thought for you especially this might be valuable in order to kind of get your head wrapped around what's ahead of you as you consider the cores and keys that we're going to need to use in your new building or in your, your remodel. So I'm going to work through this and uh, Bear with the elementary approach that I take. Uh, first of all, when we consider master keying a facility, I always kind of want to view it as a family. It's all in the family. And uh, I'll give you a little background. What we typically go in when we're uh, taking over um, facilities for a customer and rekeying them is we typically run into uh, uh, their problem being a loss of key control. What, what's represented here in this picture is a ring of keys that say a facilities director or a maintenance person carries around on his hip. The problem is, is that's not the only ring of keys he has. Um, he also has a ring similar to this in his truck if he has to drive to different locations to, um, uh, to get into, like, say, uh, tennis court uh, fencing or, um, um, well, you name the other extraneous type things, padlocks and, and this and that, um, that are outside that he drives to those locations. Instead of carrying those keys on his hip ring, he keeps that set of uh, keys in his truck. And then, of course, there's also keys that are located in the director of facilities desk drawer. And those typically represent keys that he doesn't hardly ever use, but he doesn't dare throw them away either because they might be uh, keys that represent a need to some future uh, lock that he he finds he doesn't know how to get into and well it happens to be one of those keys in his desk drawer. So three rings of keys, multiple keys on these rings and what it represents is a complete loss of key control and a need to usually rekey or think about rekeying to, to, to a grand master system, a system where you've got one key that kind of gets into almost everything, and that's what I'm going to explain to you here uh, right now. So, as I said before, we kind of look at it as a, um, a, a family tree approach, and what we have in the family tree is uh, the grandmother, and, and she's the most, uh, it's like a matriarchal system. She's the most powerful key in a system. Now, she represents the control key, and, and you have to understand one thing. I'm, I'm talking about a system that gives you the ability to remove a core, uh, the small format, their figure eight cores, best, started with best lock years ago, back in the 1920s, I believe. They created a, a removable core, so you put a key in a core, and, 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 and it only turns 15 degrees, and it pulls that core right out of a lock set, or out of a cylinder housing, or whatever, out of a padlock. So that key that does that re core removal is actually called the control key, or some people start referring to it as a core key, right? Because that's all it does. It doesn't operate the lock. It just pulls those cores out. Well, the grandmother is, is the picture I have representing the control key. So the grandmother is in charge in a removable core system. Well, she's married to her husband, the, the grandfather, right? which is the Grand Master Key. And that's a key that's going to basically be able to rule over the whole family um, with some rare exceptions. But the Grandfather Key is the Grand Master Key that you carry on your hip, right, or keep it in a safe place. And that key is going to get into any core, any lock, that we put underneath the family tree system. So it gets into padlocks. It'll get into... Uh, cabinet locks, it'll get into your door locks, into um, electric switches, it'll operate those. It, it is the key that's designed to have the power. Then we have 
uh, a master one, you could call it a master one, a master A, you can call it whatever you want, but it represents the first building that you're going to, uh, say, reiki, that you're going to put underneath this father, grandfather, grandmother system. And so uh, I've got it just being called a master one. And so that key is going to work in most all of the locks that we rekey in the first building. We, we do a lot of work with school districts, and so that might represent the high school building, you know. And then another building that will come next will we'll fall under a different, uh, different master. We'll get to that in a minute. But what we do is we basically can key each, each um, door differently or each area differently, however you want to do it. We'd work through that. But the master one key is going to work in, in a one one core. It's going to work in a one two core. It's going to work in a one three core. But we will also have individual keys that, um, that operate those, those cores. So if I've got a one one key, it's going to work in a one one core. Let me show you this on, on a, in a different format. Okay. So these are very rudimentary drawings. And I, I've d done them many times. Uh, I've drawn a core, and I've drawn some keys, and uh, these are about as good as they get with the key drawing. And the core drawing, I'm actually, uh, it's, it's more recognizable if you know what a core looks like. Let me just take a quick second in case you don't know what a core looks like. Um, uh, many of you might notice or recognize this. It looks a lot like a, um, it's, a, it's, a it's a mortise cylinder, actually. It's got a little cam on the back, okay? But the, the uh, core that I've been referring to, that figure eight core, that removable core, is, is actually been inserted into this cylinder. Uh, it's the same core that gets inserted to rim cylinders, into lock, lever lock sets, into um, padlocks, etc. cetera. And, and the key that I referred to as the control key, if you could see it from there, you'll see that there's a C on this key. Maybe you can't see it. But what that does is it goes into that core and it only turns 15 degrees, but it allows you to pull the core out of, out of that cylinder housing. Uh, that's what the control key does. That's what the grandmother is. Every other key would actually turn and spin the, uh, you know, the core in the housing. So I thought that might be helpful to see it. Now, going back to that master one idea. Okay, if I had a core, for instance, that we decided to put into the, um, the uh, grammar room, right? Or I don't know what they even call it these days, English room or, or, or whatever. But uh, if I had a core and I wanted that to be the, the grammar core, I would start with my first core and say grammar uh, subject is, is a 1-1 one -one core. And then social studies, if they still call it social studies, is a 1-2 core. Mathematics is a 1-3 core, algebra 1, one you know, and so on. But what you need to understand is that in this high school building, the master one is kind of like the head of that family. He's like the dad of the family. And so the master one is automatically going to work in that 1-1 one, one core. In fact, every core that starts with a 1, the master one will be able to operate, will be able to enter. Otherwise, the only other key that's under the master one that's going to work in this core as it stands is the one one key. So the one one key works in a one one core. The master one works in a one one core. The grandmaster, okay, the grandfather, is also going to work automatically in the one one core because it's part of his family, his family tree. And the grandmother, that control key, will actually pull that core out. You go to the next key, the 1, 2 key. The 1, 2 key does not work in a 1, 1 core, just as the 1, 1 uh, key would not work in a 1, 2 core. In other words, if I had changed this core and made it a, a 1, 2 core, now the 1, 1 key doesn't work but the one two key does, along with the master one, because he's the dad of this family, the grandfather key, and the control key pulls it. Um, uh, let me move on with the, the video slide. I'll just set this down for a second. 
I may have to re return to it, but uh, for now, I want to go to the next slide. Okay, so um, each family has its own, uh, each master, I should say, has its own family. If you're the, the master one, the first family, then every core, every key is going to start with a one. The next building that you decide to put underneath your master key system is going to be a master two. And so the, uh, I refer to the master one as a firstborn son. A secondborn son comes along and has his own kids. Okay, so a master two has his children, the two one, the two two, the two three, etc. Uh, they share the same grandmother and grandfather, if you know, but they're independent families, just like you, uh, you might have a, your brother or your sister. Um, they have their own kids, and you maybe have your own kids if you do have children. Um, you really don't have anything to do with providing for your brother's kids or disciplining them, or etc. And and he doesn't either for you. He's just their uncle. Okay. There's no real uh, affiliation. There's no real relationship except for you share the same um, grandmother and grandfather. Okay. So in that sense. Um, Otherwise, they're independent families. And so a master two is not going to work over here and get into any of these cores. And the master one is not going to leapfrog over into the building that has the master two and access any of those. They're independent families, okay? So it brings us to the next slide. Um, there are cores that only the grandmaster operates. So even though we kind of could understand the family tree structure and it makes sense to us, there, are, there is an ability to, say, put a core into, um, say, the principal's office if you're in the high school. He says, listen, I, I, I've, got, I've got a need. Um, I don't want uh, people with the master one, the custodians maybe, um, the athletic director perhaps, or, or, or the IT person. I don't want that person into my office because I've got a lot of personnel records in here and I just can't have it. And so you, you're trying to think of, well, how do I keep the high school principal's office underneath the grandmaster system, but give, uh, give him a core in his door that the master one doesn't work in, okay? And so there are those types of cores, and I refer to them as um, higher security cores. You'll see them over here. They're direct to the grandmaster. The grandmaster is still going to work in these cores, um, but they're kind of a higher level. I refer to it in the analogy as my dad, okay, he was my father, so he was the grandfather uh, um, and to, to my mom, who would have been the grandmother. I might have been the first firstborn son, I wasn't, but I might have been the first with my kids. My brother is the second building with his kid, my other brother the third building with his kids, and so on. Uh, well, my dad had card playing buddies, that's what I refer to these these cores, like you might put into the high school principal's office, there is card playing buddies. My dad's card playing buddies. Uh, his his buddies that hang out, you know, Friday night, Wednesday nights, shoot pool, do different things like this. And then come Saturday morning, you know, one or two of them would come over to our house and drink coffee with my dad, read the newspaper, and joke about, you know, what happened during the week. Uh, they really had nothing to do with me. I was my dad's son. Okay. Um, but they were his friends, and so he interacted with them, but they didn't have anything to do with me or my children, and, um, and uh, I don't know, that's part of the analogy. Anyway, uh, what, what we do is we can pin up a core so that the grandmaster still works in it, and the control key still pulls the core, but the core really has and the key really has nothing to do with any of the uh, families that fall underneath. Let me show you this on that whiteboard as well. All right, so um, a high security core where the grandmaster works in it, but they really are independent from his kids and his grandkids and so on. We would, we would mark with the HS for high security number one or number two or number three, whatever the case may be. The grandmaster, it still works in that HS1 core, and the control key, the grandmother up there, will still pull those cores out. Otherwise, you really need the key that matches the HS1, and the key that matches the HS1 core is the HS1 key. 
that's the only other key that's going to work in that type of core beyond the grandmaster and the um, and the control key the hs2 that does not work in an hs1 core the hs3 does not work in an hs1 core and so on um, there is another capability, let me just, before I take this whiteboard away, because I've got one slide that shows you this, um, there are cores that we can create, if you look up here, that only the control key can remove. Otherwise, there's no other key that works in these cores. She can pull them out, otherwise, here's what I'll, you'll see in a second. Um, I can come up with a core, pin it up, so that the grandmaster is disallowed. Just to erase these markings. We call these direct to control cores, all right? We can come up with a core, pin up a core. Usually we'd use these and say OSHA lockout tagout system. So where you've got a padlock given to the electrician that if he goes and um, closes down, goes to a circuit breaker, closes down that box and padlocks. It, it means he's going to work on some uh, electrical item or wiring down, down, the, the, uh, down the road from this box, and he doesn't want to be electrocuted, right? So OSHA says you have to be able to provide a, a padlock that no one else has a key for that he can put on that uh, circuit breaker box and, and go about his business and come back, and with his sole key can take take that padlock off and, and uh, fire things up again. So anyway, we have that capability with direct to control cores and uh, we mark them CT, CT1, CT2, CT3. So CT1 is a core that we can pin up for a, a, an area like that, OSHA lockout, tagout. Maybe even you could use a core like this in the, uh, believe it or not, the music department's candy bar storage room, all right? Because if it's a direct to control, that means it's a, a core that even the Grand Master can't get into. Or maybe it's someplace else like the safe room in the high school, where as a facilities director, you maybe want the ability to tell, um, tell the high school principal, listen, I don't even have a key that works in this, uh, in this safe room. I can't get in because we put in a core that's direct to control, right? So the, the key that works in the direct to control core is the key that matches the core marking on the side of the core. Or some of you have face core marks where you can actually see the marking on the face of your core. A CT1 key is the only key that works in a CT1 core other than the fact that that control key, that core key, if you might, you might call it, also pulls that core out. So technically speaking, and you don't need to necessarily uh, give this information out, but technically speaking, if you have a control key and a screwdriver, you probably have the most powerful key and access in your entire system. And a control key and a screwdriver will let you in to that high school, you know, safe room or into um, into that candy bar storage in the music teacher's uh, um, practice room or, or whatever. Moving on from there, let me just see what next my next slide is. Okay, I've got some explaining to do. I want to get a little closer to the um, PowerPoint. 